welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast for broken little birds who need to be mended and fixed from the inside out. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? You know, I'm so great, Ben. I just spent Four hours of my life watching Vanderpump Villa on Hulu television, Ben. I love man tears. I really do. Lisa Vanderpump's new show on Hulu. Um, So my life has changed. I'm a different person now. Wow. Um, I had a very similar experience. I just ate a breakfast burrito. (laughs) Totally the same thing. (laughs) Yeah, it's we just probably a whole bunch let, of we probably both thing. let out a huge burp after. <laughs> exactly, just a whole bunch of things that are bad for me are wrapped up and put into my mouth. <laughs> yep, uh, always better with carbs attached. Yeah, you know both of those things. Uh, yeah, I was watching that show. I woke up for some reason at six in the morning craving vape. Isn't that weird? I quit well, vaping. I think- a long time ago, I feel like last year or something. And I, well, it feels like a long time. I guess a year is not that long. And then recently I've been smoking vitamin vapes. I got like two vitamin vapes because I saw them on Facebook. I woke up, I guess, craving vitamin B. I don't know what it is. It's so weird. Uh, so I'm biting my nails a lot and trying to get over that. <laughs> Wow. And why am I telling you that? I don't oh, know. This is very confessional, but I like it. But it wasn't drugs. And uh, then I um, watched Vanderpump Villa to make myself like, feel better. You're like, this morning, I only want to um, be around things that start with the letter V. You're like, <laughs> I'm craving vape, and I want to watch Vanderpump Villa. <laughs> and I'm going to have some vanilla after this. And um, I might uh, go and rent a van. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're just talking a lot this week, and I think I'm just at the point where I'm like, hi, everybody. Woke up wanting to do heroin, but I didn't do it. Okay, let's get on with the show. So, uh, I'm Husk. The reason I watched Vanderpump Villa is because we are going to be taking that show on on our Patreon because you guys have been asking for it. Now, is that a promise we're going to do every episode? No, of course not. We don't know. (laughs) Maybe it's absolute shit. I loved it by the end, but who knows? Ben hasn't watched it yet. No promises, but next week we begin with a large preview of the first four episodes in the cast and then we're going to do a full recap of episode number five so join us on patreon for that that's also where you get these videos hi it's also where you get um i don't know dick it's, it's ben's dick you page. Get dick. it's only fans. yeah my dick pick go to watcherpractice.com to see a pic of my dick um will it it's be erect much. or will it be a limp after i watch vanderpump villa that's gonna be for you to check out um, well, I can guarantee, uh, yeah. you one, guarantee you one thing. You will not have an erect penis <laughs> after watching. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. It was not for any erectile reasons. If anything, it's going to cause some dysfunction. So this is what I imagine Vanderpump Villa is going to be. I feel like it's going to be a lot of scenes of Lisa's staff serving poached salmon over like a spring a spring mix to guests. I feel like that's going to be the whole show. And then like some then some petty squabbling. The chef is shockingly talented. There are actually two of them. There's a, a chef and a Sue. Their food is gorgeous. I was very surprised that they actually are delivering on quality somewhat. And as Ben kills a fly, you see, that's how we roll over here. I'm like, this <laughs> I'm like is the listen. classiest show. Uh, so that's nice to see. Um, but it is a Lisa Vanderpump production. I mean, there's there are flower, there are ro- there are thousands of dollars of roses everywhere, and there are things called like croquet and class or like i don't know everything's pink it's like we're going to play jenga but it's painted pink you know shit like that um and then she does <laughs> is the thing where there? she hires misogynistic horrible roid ragey cokehead men that abuse the women but then she's like we can't act like that because you know her favorite thing to do is to baby terrible men so she's got that uh but it also has like a lot of really good girl power and stuff and the men are definitely the villains like the two the two machismo assholes are definitely the ones you want to see murdered okay. by the end so well, i mean all in all it's pretty fun okay well pa- do we see pandy like lurking behind her mother wearing a little we shawl around her pa- shoulders her, that little pashmina kind of you know and a little hat by <laughs> a little nashville hat 
You know, that's Pol- that, that's that's Pandy's look. She's like, I'm modest, so I don't show my shoulders, and I wear a little hat, and I have my bangs in front of my eyes, so that's why you don't see them. No, but Vanderpump has lots of terrible hats. Like, she's really leaned into her, like, just old lady non-matching fashion. You know, as long as it's pink, she'll throw it on next to something else that's kind of pink, you know? So it's a whole thing. We're going to take that journey next week, but just to give you a preview of what that's like, Ben. Okay. And then um, we're going to go on a huge, giant, 19 city European tour. Just kidding. It's like two, but we're going to Dublin, London, and Birmingham in May. And we're also going to be in Los Angeles in May. So go get tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. We're so excited to be out, even if it's only for a month. We're seeing places we have never seen before. Yeah. We are doing, we are seeing places and going to things that we never thought we'd be doing. And it's going to be wild. We'll be all over this, the continent. And uh, if you see us, say hi. Just, you know, if we're on the side of the road, just hitchhiking, just trying to get to like, you know, wherever we need to go. Just, you know, just to your two friendly podcaster friends, just (laughs) give us a ride. Please save us. Um, Just please ask us, are you in a tool? Are you no tool? Oh, tool? oh yeah, we definitely have to do that when we're in Ireland. Just ask people. Imagine people like, yes, I am an O'Toole. I was like, oh, are you related to Megan King Edmonds? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Oh, <laughs> okay. Wow, that was we're really, easy. really good luck on this trip. <laughs> um, so I think that's what she said too. Actually, right? I'm having really good luck. So uh, let's get into the valley, this mess of a show. It's so good. This is what we have to look forward to, I suppose, in 10 years. If Vanderpump Villa is a success, we'll see them all uh, in the San Fernando Valley at some point. They're like, I used to live in France. Now I'm here (laughs) on Woodman Avenue. So um, we're in this fight. They're all still fighting at their Capri party. Um, and for those who need some context, uh, the controversy was that Janet told Zach that Michelle is a Republican and possibly racist, although apparently the real story is she said, no, I didn't like that uh, Janet was in favor of don't say gay laws, which is hilarious. Like, that's supposed to soften the blow. Um, and then... Oh, I hate black people. I hate black gay people. <laughs> and so then Zach went and told Kristen, and Kristen in, at some moment said, like verbalize this and then at the party at girls night Brittany announced that Kristen had announced this and now michelle is mad at Kristen for opening up her mouth and saying the r word she didn't say the r words because there were two r words <laughs> but she said the r word so that's that's where we're, we're at right now and now Kristen has tried to apologize at this capri sun party and by try to apologize, he means to not apologize at all, because that's that's how Christian rolls. I'm sorry you did this. Sorry Zach did this. Okay. So um, Jesse is screaming at everyone right now. He's like, I swear to God, you shut the fuck up right now, Christian. And Luke's like, you apologize. You don't come at my woman. I'm a man. You don't come at my woman. And then Michelle's like, you should go. And Janet's like, bye now. Bye. Janet, who every, by the way, spoiler alert, in two seconds, they try and pin everything on Janet, which is, which is also really funny. So then Michelle is like, you know what? That face right there, that's why no one feels sorry for you, Kristen. And then we see Kristen's face and she's doing this. She's doing that like bobblehead thing on like a dashboard where she's just like nodding, but also shaking her head, but also inside burping where she's like, "Mm." (laughs) yeah, (laughs) because now you're trying to make it seem like you're the victim, but you know what you're doing? You have made me a victim. I am Mexican. I am Persian. I am someone who thinks drag queens should not be reading books to children. She is, uh, first of all, Mexicans and Persians can still be racist, okay? I don't know if there's a chart somewhere that we need to all go over about who can and who can't be racist, but Mexican Persians fall into the can be racist category. Um, and also, I like what, that Michelle is a lister of what she is, because she does it later in this episode, too, where she's like, I'm Mexican. I am a Persian. I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a realtor. I'm a lady who drives a car. 
I'm I am someone who just bought a lean cuisine. Uh, I'm a so, Ross dressed for less passer buyer. <laughs> I am still a holder of a blockbuster card just for old time sakes. Or <laughs> so Kristen's like, this is all because of him. All because of him. She points to Zach and Zach does his face thing. He's like, <laughs> like he's like shocked that he's the one in trouble. I mean, the thing, Zach is so sneaky. He, do, he, he does not get any shit, and he is fully someone to, I would say, to blame as much as Kristen. And so Michelle, she goes, and now the fact that I have to have that word and my name associated with it, I was like, again, there were two words. So which is the one that you accept and which is the one that you deny? And we never get into that, by the way. <laughs> like, that we one's don't. fine. That the whole the whole gay part's fine. It's just the uh, the uh, mystery racism, and everyone acts like, "Oh my god, I can't believe that." Your argument, if you want to have the discussion of whether being a Republican makes you a racist or not, have that discussion. You guys are on a TV show, but that's not the, that's what the discussion actually is. But they're also afraid to have that discussion. That it's just like, "How dare you even accuse me of being yes. an R word?" <laughs> Which you're right could mean either Republican or racism because it's it's those words are working in tandem in this argument. But that's a conversation. These ca- this cast is too fucking weak to have. Have the conversation then if that's yeah. what it's going to be. Well, Jesse she- pretty openly follows Trump and has posted. I saw on Reddit him posting like a Republican thing in 2016. Like I don't know, of following course. Trump and making comments anti Biden that are like, oh really Biden? If if you mean it, that if you if you have a problem with what Trump did, then tell us how you're going to do it better instead of just telling us you have a problem with it. <laughs> Something like that, you know. I saw all this shit posted on the internet. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be that way and you're gonna accuse, you're gonna have the are Republicans all racist or whatever. Have that conversation, but don't just run like you can't believe someone would have the gall to say it. This is the most ridiculous conversation. And by the way. The most amazing, probably, of the It's year. hilarious. I'm loving it. Well, so Michelle's like, and now the fact that I have to have that word and my name associated. So she is actually more upset that this has been put on TV than she is about the inherent accusation, you know? Right. Like, and, and this comes back later in the episode. Like, she is more bothered, and that's why she's angry at Kristen. She's not angry at Janet for saying it. She's not angry at Zach for perpetuating it she's angry at Kristen because Kristen put it on tv and by the way for the record Kristen didn't even put it on tv it was Brittany who elicited it out who then made a call back to something that happened off camera at girls night so Kristen is taking the fall for this because you know it's Kristen she literally falls <laughs> so it's like she's an easy target and uh she, and she put just it out doesn't there. have any skills to deal with it i mean honestly and it's so funny because it's reality tv what she's great at being on but she doesn't have the skills to be like so you're mad are you republican or not because that's all that was said it was said that you're a republican so you probably have some racist views because that's what was said like well i don't know why no one will just say that but that's all she needed to say. And then watch this chick go crazy and try and backpedal or, or tap dance or do whatever her and her husband are going to do. Like, <laughs> go ahead. But Kristen doesn't do that. Instead, she's like, Zach did this. I can't believe everybody is betraying me. Ooh. You know, she has to Kristen <laughs> out about it and start freaking out. Her head's going to fucking old, just lop off and just start rolling around the ground, just moving so much. I mean, the woman looks like she's a bobblehead on the back of a horse, you know, just like <laughs> trying to make it down I- a cobblestone street. I would love to see the inverse of this scene on some show that takes place like in West Virginia or like, I don't know where, like some, some red state where there's someone who's secretly like a Democrat <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> they're like, she is in favor of, you know, drag queens talking at, you know, teaching kids <laughs> at the library yeah, or the something. And everyone's version. like, oh, what? <laughs> Yeah, that's the argument secretly on a TLC. Democrat. So you think that drag queens should be given? How dare you I, say that that I uh, that I like drag queens reading stories to children in libraries? I'm a realtor. <laughs> I have to go to work tomorrow. I'm a. <laughs> Do you understand? My life is bigger than this. I have a children, and I have a I have a jobs. And guess what? I have to report to them. And if they know, if they think for one moment that I'm liberal. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't understand what this does to me. You can say whatever you want to say, but I still have to wake up and greet people at the Walmart tomorrow. And do you think that's going to be easy when I say, howdy, welcome to the show, turn that fan upside down, and they say, fuck you, Mabel? <gasps> Do you know how hard it is for me not to ask for people's pronouns when they walk into the Walmarts? <laughs> <laughs> Just like a, a closeted, progr- very progressive person. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like, what were you doing last night? I was at my bowling league. What were you doing? I was at DEI training. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh, ma'am, were you passing out drugs on Halloween? I was not. First of all, it's called All Saints Day, and second of all, those were called Plan B. Okay, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway, so so Michelle is like really pissed at Kristen. <laughs> Kristen's like, I'm fucking sorry. I'm sorry I raised my voice. Michelle's like, I feel like an asshole that I have to say I'm not a racist. And it's because a crazy person <laughs> didn't want to feel attached to, attacked anymore, so she decided to attack me. <laughs> so Kristen's like, I'm sorry to both of you that I reacted the way I did, and that I even fucking opened my mouth, and you know me. You fucking know me better than you know me. I'm just reliable, grounded. Kristen Doty, my reputation precedes me. Everybody knows I'm just Kristen. It's the <laughs> most harmless thing on the earth. By the way, I just called the police and told them that you uh, stole the car. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so Michelle's the, like, the, I thought I did know you. Michelle is another in a long line of people that Bravo cast that talks like this. Like she is reading her lines off of cue cards. How dare you? I am a Mexican. I am a Persian grilled chicken Caesar salad. M- Michelle, stop reading. <laughs> stop reading the craft services menu, Michelle. <laughs> so Kristen's like, "Are you joking? I have done nothing but protect you, Michelle. Remember when we went to Whole Foods? You didn't see it, but a cart came barreling towards you, and I jumped in front of it, and I stopped it from running into your shin. You don't even know what I do to protect you. And this is also so Kristen." You know I love you. That's why I protect you. And everyone's like, what? What is what is Christian protecting her from? What could this mean? <laughs> and uh, Janet's like, um, I would love if they have some sort of like kink that nobody knows about. That would be hilarious. Yeah, Janet, wouldn't it? And Danny's like, where is this coming from? And um, he goes like, Daniel, Daniel, shh, shh, Daniel, shh. <laughs> it's very near. So they're like, well, she's done a shitty job protecting Michelle, hasn't she? And so Jesse's like, um, Kristen, I'm not being an asshole here, but you really need to grow up because you just keep doing the same shit over and over again, expecting a different result. That's like uh, Jesse uh, doing his hair in the morning. Also, I'd like to add, I have to say, Zach, like, of course, the internet's obsessed with Zach's helmet hair, helmet toupee, wig, whatever you want to call it. Like, and there's all these memes on Twitter <laughs> about that hairline. It is wild. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is, it is, if that's his natural hair, then I, that is a, that is a fascinating, it's um, not natural hair, fasc- okay. but it's not. It's, we know no, it's, it's not. not. It's not a baseball mitt. Hair. It's a baseball mitt that fell on his head. <laughs> it's but, a Koopa Troopa shell. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, I feel like it's distracting away from Jesse's ridiculous hair because, again, he has like the hair pattern of someone who spent many years with like a band that he that he pulls his hair back with. And now when he doesn't have the band, it's like he just has a permanent dent. I have one. I'm saying this as someone who has a permanent dent because of these headphones. My hair now automatically dents back there because of these headphones, even after I shower and everything. So um, but I but I I can manage well, wait till it, you but start I, balding right on the headphone line. That's that's well, a fun one. I'm ba- I'm that's... balding right behind it. So yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah, with the things we do, guys, for love. But yeah, his hair is crazy. Uh, I think that Z- uh, Zach's is just so far removed from everybody else's because it's insane. But I finally figured out what would make Zach's look work. I think if he wore a fanny pack, it would work. On his head? No. Just a oh. fan- if he were a fanny pack person. Like fanny packs and like high socks. I think it would. He looks like someone's mom speed walking, is what I'm trying to say. He looks like someone's mom at Disneyland. He's like, I don't want, look what I got. 
This is like a purse, but it goes around your waist, so you don't have to carry it. Now I have my license in here. I have the kid's gum in here. I have everything in here. I have keys in here. I have the hotel keys. No one can get to it. If they even tug on it, I can feel them. I can feel them. You're not going to pickpocket this. I'll tell you that much. Good luck, Disneyland. Um, I think he would look. He looks like someone's mom. So I think fanny pack that would make the whole package complete. I think what he needs is just to walk around with his hands in the shape of little U's so that way he can complete the Lego look because that's basically what the hair is giving. It's giving sort of like the hair that you stick onto the Lego man. <laughs> it's like, that oh, is the best internet hair. meme about Zach. I think we've all tried has, to come have up there with been one. One. Oh, tons of them. Yeah. That's, I haven't seen that's a what Lego people man are calling one. him like the Lego man because that is, <laughs> he's, He's de- okay. Then he should walk around Disneyland with a fanny pack singing. <laughs> Everything is awesome. <laughs> Everything is awesome. I told you. Everything is awesome. Uh, I love also his Spider-Man power, which is that when he talks, he thrusts his palm at whoever he's talking to, as if he's going to like send out like a web. But unfortunately, all his webbing has been consumed by his hair. Yeah. So Jesse's like, Kristen, you need to change your behavior, says Jesse. Shut up, Jesse. So Kristen's like, don't even start with me, Jesse. Don't even start with me. And Jax is like, um, we're all we're all attacking like one person here, okay? It's like not cool, guys. Let's just like think about who we're attacking here, all right? And then we have Luke doing his Meredith Marks impersonation, which is pretending to leave every two seconds. It's like, okay, you know what? That's it. We're going. Let's fucking go, Kristen. This is fucking stupid. I'm, I'm getting up. This is, uh, come on. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm just going to sit down again so I can do that in two more minutes. Okay, wait. <laughs> it's time? Okay. All right, Kristen, we're going. We're going. Come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Zach's like, I'm so sorry, but she was attacking me first. And Chris is like, how do you guys, and then how fucking dare you guys bring up this racist shit too? Do you not traumatize a little baby? It's like, Kristen, someone get Kristen before she dies of SDS, shaking Doty syndrome. Get her. Someone <laughs> put a belt around her. Jad's like, um, you brought up the racist shit. This is your fault, even though it was me who first talked about it behind the scenes. But that's fine. It's your fault. And Luke is like, okay, you know what? That's it. That's it. We're out of here. We're out of here. Okay, we're going to go. <laughs> Guys, this time, it's for real. We are going to go. Uh... And um, so Jess- Jesse does that reality show thing where he's like, welcome to the party. <laughs> and uh, Jasmine's like, oh my God. Let me contribute to this show real quick, everybody. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. Am I the one taking crazy pills here? Because let me tell you what I can do. None of this. You know why? Get, can I buy an apostrophe? Is that for sale on Wheel of Fortune? Because I can't. <laughs> cannot equals can't. I can't. Janet says, you know what? The word racist came in when Kristen started talking, not when Michelle climbed into... The, the White House <laughs> or the Capitol. So, Jan, <laughs> I was like trying to remember the name of, I was like, I couldn't remember Mike Pence's name. Um, so, Luke is like, okay, you know what? It came in when you started talking about Zach. That's the first time racist came up because I heard it on the phone. And you know what? Speaking of phones, I have in a conference call with we are getting out of here right now.com. Excuse me. Goodbye. <laughs> So Luke's like, no, it came when you started talking about Zach. And that's the first time racist came up. And guess what? I heard it on the phone. Luke, would you get a fucking life? Luke, I get like standing up for your girlfriend and stuff. But I feel like Luke is always listening. I feel like every time somebody calls, Kristen's like, get this. I'm going to put it on speakerphone. We can talk about it on our podcast on balance later. (laughs) And then he just sits there and listens because he's that guy that no matter what happens in Kristen's life, he's like, this isn't your fault. And let me tell you why it's not your fault, honey. And he's like, it's just so hard for you. We get a scene of him doing this later. He's just so that kind of boyfriend you know Mm. so anyway we see him doing it right now where uh he's just like you're the one who did it i was listening on the phone okay well that's creepy so then Jax is like um you know i think there's like an element of truth of what they're both saying but uh you know look janet and i are similar because she likes to spew shit and then she sits back and watches them all tear it down yeah but that's what your wife just did that's literally what Brittany is doing and then Jax and Brittany both get up from the table and start producing yeah, I, I love how Z- Jax is just, like, so 
proud of what a piece of shit he is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's well, like, yeah. He's just- rewarded for it. You know? We're all like, oh my God, Jackson, well, Jackson shows great. You know? It's like we're, we're yeah. rewarders of terrible behavior. Well, the funny thing is that Jax is probably going to take credit. He's like, yeah, it's because of me. The show is good. Just proves I was the number one guy in the group. It's like, actually, the, what's making the show great, Jax has very little to do with it. He actually is really comparatively not on the show very much at all. I would argue that this is kind of a Chris and Doty vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, actually. If you think about actually, it. I think all the characters are doing kind of their job, which I'm, I'm surprised by because they're such a group of kind of charisma-free people. But at the same time, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> It's working. I mean, in general, none of this should be working, but it is somehow. Yeah. So Michelle's like, suck it up, sit down, say you're sorry, and say that no one said that ever. And Kristen's like, well, so you want me to pretend that I made it up? Yes. <laughs> pretend to make it up. This is your moment right now. Tell everyone I'm not an R word. So Kristen's like, it's bullshit that I'm the one getting solely attacked right now. I repeated some things. I shouldn't have done that. But I repeated what Zach told me and Luke. And Jax is like, first of all, you're not you're not going to win this battle, Kristen, because <laughs> you never win any battle. And also, just get to the bottom of it with Zach. Like, just call him out. If he's lying, he's lying. Call him out. Say you're a fucking liar. Come on, like, have a fight. Do a fight. Come on. He's on the show for a reason. Fight with him. This is like when they made those episodes about Bravo shows. They've done a few of them where they're specials, where they're like production behind the scenes of Real Housewives. And they show the producers running around, like chasing Kim Richards through the hotel as she's trying to leave and forcing her to shoot. That's what Jax and Brittany are both doing. Jax is like, Kristen, here's what you need to do. Go call out Zach. Do you think Zach's lying? You should fucking tell him. You should fucking tell him he's lying. Oh my God, do I have something in my nose? God, my teeth are numb. Do, do you feel your lips? Was it something in the food? And then outside, Brittany's like, you know what you should do? Y'all need to work this out. Talk about it. <laughs> so Danny and Nia leave because their babysitter is like, they're running out of time with their babysitter. And Nia's like, the Uber is it's here. We have to go right now, Danielle. Come on, Danielle. She's like very determined to leave. And Danielle's and- like, okay, everybody, we got to run. I just wanted to get this out there before we go. Love y'all. And three under two, three under two. Oh, yeah. Didn't didn't get to give any autographs tonight, but I'd just like to leave you with this. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a zombie voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now... Um, so now uh, everyone's trying to like broker a piece with, between Zach and Kristen because they're like sitting, they're sitting like off to the side now in like on the patio and they're going to talk. And Jack's like, come on, go handle it. Say what you got to say. So Brittany's like, yeah, you guys go. Oh, okay, okay, you figure it out. Let's like try to like figure out what's going to happen so we can move on. <laughs> so Kristen's like, Zach. I am so disappointed. And Jack's like, oh my God, this is so exhausting. I just want to have a nice dinner and do some shots and get drunk and bitch about my wife. But that's it. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Zach, I'm so disappointed in you, Zach. I don't even fucking know you right now, Zach. Like, I understand that I that it hurt a lot of people, but I am not here to talk about racism again. He's like, Kristen, you are trying right now to take zero responsibility for this, and you know what? I've said things to you, and I admitted it on camera. Do you remember? It was on camera where I admitted that I said the word Republican. <laughs> and we have to see a flashback to when they spoke on the phone last week. And Zach is like, and for for that, I take full responsibility. And I am very sorry, but we all said shit behind other people's back. So you are not fully to blame. I am to blame too. And like Zach is doing that thing where he is like squishing his hands down and then pulling out. Like it's like he's he's trying to like knead dough in front of his face. He's like, I said certain things, you said certain things, we both said certain things, my hands in your face to show that you said something, and now I'm pulling dough across my face again to show that I said something. <laughs> And so like, I'm not lying about anything, Zach. And he's like, well, we always lash out at the people closest to us. But tonight, what the fuck was that at the table, Kristen? What was that? Like, literally, you just steamrolled me. You didn't even go after Janet. And Janet's the one who said the stuff, Kristen. 
I mean, Zach, it's so funny. He's like, you steamrolled me when he literally didn't even say anything, or at least it wasn't shown on the show. Like, he didn't say, like, he he, ne- he never once said, you know what? Like, what Kristen maybe shouldn't have said it, but Janet did say these things. Like, because he backed up Kristen on the phone uh, last week, and then he was just silent at dinner and just let Kristen just get it from all sides. Because she's the one who brought it up in public. So, you know, listen, I'm the same way. I'm like, I can talk shit to you in public, but then, I mean, in private. But if you go blab that shit, I'm sitting back. I had the sense to stay in private. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Crazy. Well, yeah. And I mean, it's it's definitely like a don't shoot the messenger thing. I think it was like, no, I'm sure shoot also. the fucking th- messenger. Sometimes a messenger needs to be shot. Kill him. That's how you send your own message. Well, I think I can imagine that Kristen thought she was like, uh, like in her mind, you know, after she was like canceled in 2020 for the things that she did, she's probably thinking like, well, we now I've learned and I've grown. And when we see this behavior, we have to address it spot on and call it out. So she was like, I'm going to call it out. <laughs> and they're all like, fuck you. Don't do that. Protect her. Protect her. Right. Um, when she should be saying like, it should be. Okay, well, I did say that she said that, and she did say that, and then Janet should say, yeah, I said, I found out Michelle's a Republican, which makes me a little leery, because a lot of Republican views tend to be rooted in racism in some way, shape, or form, and I don't know if I'm ready to have that discussion with her, and I don't know how much I can trust her, because obviously we're not similar minds. Yeah, I think actually if Kristen had the mindset of like, yeah, I said it, and I've lost a lot of respect for you, Michelle, if she had come from that point of view, then Michelle's on the defense, and then Michelle's like, oh my god, like, no, you don't understand, I never said that, da 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 but because Kristen's like, I'm sorry, I never should have said it, I never should have said it, it gave Michelle all the high ground to be like, you said that and you ruined my reputation instead of Kristen, you know, Kristen could have had the high ground in this entire conversation. Yeah, she could have. You're right. She should have been on the attack. She should have been like, 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 so are you? So are you Republican? And you don't consider yourself racist? I mean, she should bring it up. And um, And that would force Janet. And then and then because then it would force Michelle to be like, why do you like I never said that? And she's like, well, she said it. She said it. And I've lost total respect for you now because of that. And then Janet would have been forced to clarify what she said. And then Zach would have been clarified. And Kristen would have come out smelling like not roses, but like, I don't know, like a traffic median. And, uh, but instead, because she was so determined to get back in the good graces of like, let's face it, the only wealthy people on the show, um, she had to kiss Michelle's ass and Michelle was able to, to use that to just make Kristen feel well, like shit. Look, we can't expect people to suddenly, I mean, this show celebrates terrible men and rewards them for their behavior. We can't really expect people to go up against Trump. I mean, he's like the ultimate in terrible men who we're rewarding still at this point. Like, he still has a pretty decent chance of becoming president again. So (laughs) I don't really think this is the kind of show that's going to stand up against that, you know? Jax is kind of that for Bravo. (laughs) He is, yeah. he is that. Okay, so um, anyway, back to this. So Zach's like, <laughs> I take full responsibility for not being racist. Okay, lasher outer. So Kristen's like, Jason, Jason, you know, I would never do anything to hurt Janet. Okay, like I wouldn't have repeated it to Zach, and I shouldn't have even brought it up. I should, it should have just died there. And Zach's like, "Thank you. That's all we needed." Because, like, I really think that Janet would love to hear what you just said, Kristen. Maybe Janet should hear it. Meanwhile, Janet has been been. um, spying. She's been, (laughs) yeah. And by the way, this is so this show. She's standing behind a glass door with her back to the glass door. Looking around the corner, <laughs> we can see you. It's a <laughs> door glass, glass door, girl. Well, I don't think Janet wants to hear any of this because she has a baby to protect right now. I'm a protector, and Janet's like, "Oh, so since when do you care about that?" Don't even, Janet. Are you joking? Seriously, seriously. I'm gonna excuse. I'm gonna excuse myself right now. Excuse me. Let me just fall all over this coffee table. Kaka. Okay, I'm gonna so- go now. I need to be on set because there are so many questions I have. What does this comment, what did that comment mean when she said, you have a baby to protect? And she's like, since when do you care about that? So does Kristen have a past of not caring about babies to protect? <laughs> What's happening? Or yeah, is Janet sure. just saying, you, don't, you didn't care about that when you told everybody that I said that somebody said? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's like a little bit of everything. 
you know, I, I don't, we don't have enough context to know like how involved Kristen is on the baby journey. Cause like, we know that we've seen a lot of Brittany being like, I want to buy my bub. Oh, oh my God, God it's a rock. Oh my God, baby, I can't want to touch her. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want there to be a storyline where Kristen like abandoned some baby in the Dillards. Like, what happened? <laughs> I need to know. So uh, Kristen's like, oh, well, listen, Janet's saying, you put words in my mouth, Kristen, that are untrue words. And that's causing me to rethink things. And Kristen's like, but it was what was told to me. And she's like, can I finish, Kristen? Here's what's happening. It's causing me stress. Kristen's like, oh, my God, I feel really uncomfortable. Uh-oh. You know what we're about to have in Los Angeles in 2024? An uncomfortable off. Who has made who the most uncomfortable? Here we go, guys. Someone is going down for this. <laughs> uh, also, I saw the um, I saw a bonus scene from this show. You know, with the, like you know, like the Peacock version where they show like more footage. And I believe right at this moment is when Luke said, "Guys, we're getting it. Uh, that's it. We're gonna go. We're gonna go right now." My my girlfriend is uncomfortable. So then Jason is like, that was a joke, by the way. That didn't really happen. I'm just in my mind imagining. Because <laughs> I, I could see on your face, you're like, oh, really? Did that happen? I was like, no, okay, let me clarify. Didn't happen. <laughs> you got uh, this chat, really. Because <laughs> you know he was just in the background just trying to threaten to leave again. Yeah. So um, Jason's like, okay. He's like, okay, well, how do we go from like A to B to C to get to D? You know what I mean? And then there's also like E and then F and then G and then H. And we go to like I, J, K, and then there's like an L, M, N, O, P situation. And then Oh Q, my God, and R, your semantics and S, just and gave T. me a boner. You were such a lawyer. You were so semantical. Oh my God. Oh my God. Boner. I love, honestly, I still love that Zach is clearly the poorest person on this show. And so just like being around a professional is like very exciting for him. <laughs> oh my God. You have a, such a job. <laughs> you just have like such an air of somebody with like a job. It's crazy. What's that like? Hold I on. have a question. Like? So Are, payroll is that, a, is that an air <laughs> microphone you're holding? Yeah, it's just a pretend microphone. One day I'll have a real one. But for now, just answer my hand. What, what do you? Can you, you tell me what payroll is? Is that like you get money that's on top of like a little bun, or is it like an actual like there's like a roll that just rolls? It just rolls off. I'm just like so confused about things that happen in workplaces. <laughs> <laughs> um so janet's like um i'm gonna leave it here Kristen, because i need some space and i need time to digest but right now do you know what i need some space and Kristen's like i agree i agree with space i, I need space too so that's why the new apartment next to katie maloney by the way in case you didn't watch the after show okay so next we go over to um, which is really crazy to see a modern farmhouse redo in the valley. It's Jackson Brittany's house. Oh, I did it. I did it too. Hi, Cruz. You got cheese all over you like father, like son. <laughs> Give me that face. Here's a raspberry. You want to try a raspberry? Who wants a raspberry? JX, you want a raspberry too? Um, so Brittany's like, oh, you got cheese all over you, buddy. Give me that face. <laughs> 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 but she's also face. frowning. <laughs> I can't not frown anymore. <laughs> Give me that face. <laughs> um, so the thrust of the scene is that uh, Cruz was like developing quote unquote on time as much as you know babies can be on time and but and he was starting to say things like mama and dada and doggy but then one day he just sort of stopped and started to regress and i immediately became actually quite concerned because i was like I actually remember uh jacqueline larita's uh storyline with her son which sort of had a, a similar path so i was like oh wow this could become this could be, become a very trying situation for them. Um, so the speech therapist comes over and uh, they do uh, speech therapy. And, you know, uh, at one point, the crews, they're trying to get crews to say the word more. And so Cruz is like, more. And I was like, okay. So starting to speak like Brittany a little bit. Can I have some box, please? It's Jack's at the lip filler place. 
Uh, yeah, Jax and Brittany are both sitting there watching the therapist work with the kid, you know, and I get it, you know, because they're, they're parents and they're worried and stuff, but they're both sitting there going, oh my God, did he say it? Well, it was kind of slow, but he still said it. He said it. I mean, it was slow. You'll do better next time. I mean, it was kind of good. I- I'll write that a six. I'll give that a six. <laughs> Don't worry. I love the number six, honey. <laughs> this kid, I can guarantee you this. I don't know a lot about child development or what's going on with the child. I can predict this much. When he does start speaking, one of his first phrases is going to be, shut the fuck up, both of you, please. (laughs) Can also Miss Dory work with um, Sherry? Because Sherry just sits there not speaking also. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She's like, okay, so that is the 150 for that hour. Now we're going to do white lipstick therapy (laughs) with your mother, okay? Um, Everybody leave the room, please. So, so Brittany, I think we've discovered, um, we don't, we're still trying to work on Cruz, not sure what's going on there, but with your mother, we have deduced that she's been using whiteout on her lips, which may be affecting her ability to communicate properly. (laughs) (laughs) That's an easy fix. That's an easy fix. Now they're talking about how, um, they don't bang anymore. And, um, Britain's like, I can't believe it. We used to rip each other's clothes off. Now I don't get nothing. (laughs) So... She says, I'm like, our sex life is like one of those old westerns. I'm the tumbleweed rolling by. <laughs> you know, don't you remember in the good, the bad, and the ugly when the tumbleweed goes by and goes, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so, oh, uh, let's see. So now the good, we go, the bad, oh. and the, you're a cool guy. <laughs> so now Jax is like, um, well, you know what? It's going to be even harder when we have more kids. So we're going to be banging even not as much as we're not banging now. I think I'm going to go to the gas station and get some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go to the AM, PM. So uh, then we go over to Jesse and Michelle's place. And uh, they're sitting on their patio. And they're talking about the, the party the night before. And Michelle's like, I'm going to go to sleep as soon as I put Isabella down at eight o'clock. I'm like, I'm going to go to sleep actually right now while you talk, because that's what you make me do. And then Jesse's like, yeah, I have to go to an event tonight. Tonight's events can be a little bit different than last night. <sighs> so then Kristen sent me a text message and it said, I just want to assure you that your secrets are safe with me. <laughs> that is so Kristen. <laughs> Don't worry. Your secrets are safe with me. and i don't retaliate for the sake of my own mental health but if you put a coffee table in my way i will fall over it that is a fact (laughs) just get me to lay the land um (laughs) i literally do lay on the land after i see a coffee table (laughs) um but i mean it's funny because i believe knowing Kristen, she probably meant to say look like, if you tell me a secret, like, it's in the vault. Like, you don't ever have to worry about it. <laughs> but because she writes, Kristen, she writes it like a threat. Like, your secrets are safe with me. <laughs> don't I worry. she exactly means it as a threat. I think Kristen knows exactly what she's doing. I think she's <laughs> like, oh, really? You're going to turn against me on TV? Well, guess what? I have all your secrets. So don't worry. I'm not going to come after you on TV just because you're coming after me on TV. But just remember, I have your secrets, and I'll still be here <laughs> when you want to talk again. Just remember, I've seen the selfie of you at Nancy Pelosi's desk. So Jesse is like, (laughs) by the way, uh, I still have that Viking helmet. Do you want me to give that back or no? I still have the ones you tried to, you tried to buy uh, Nia that says proud boy. (laughs) That was an honest mistake, Kristen. (laughs) I actually thought that was generally for I really thought I was getting a gift for Jax. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what baby wouldn't want to make America great again? I didn't even know it was political. I didn't realize these things. <laughs> so Michelle is like, just like, what is she talking about? Ah, Michelle, I'm talking right now. And Michelle's like, um, I don't know what that means exactly, but does she not comprehend that my life is bigger than this? I work. I'm a mother of a three-year-old. I... I have slippers. 
And I keep trying to be a bigger person. I keep spoons out of the garbage disposal. I take out the trash. I got a two-for-one special on Spatty Daddies. I'm a doormat user. I'm also a doormat cleaner. <laughs> so um, he's like, yeah, you, you were just so direct and forceful. I loved it. And you were like, listen to me. And she goes, no, I wasn't. He goes, yes, you were. The way you threw your chair, you were like, everybody shut the fuck up. And you threw your chair and you beat up all those people. And those ninjas started coming out of trees. And you started swapping them down with your bare hands. She's like, you better stop it right now. But they have come back to life as a couple. They look like they're going to rip each other's clothes off. Yeah, because they're both angry at the same person. So Michelle's like, it's just so hard to talk over everyone. And I was trying to calm, stay, be like, I was trying to make everyone stop. Because yeah, and you, wait, you threw that chair away. No, the chair was light. It just fell over. I'm not a She-Hulk. <laughs> but she's smiling. She's like, yes, I did that. I did it. And so mm. she's like, in a twisted way, I think Kristen is bringing us closer together. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a Mexican. I am a Persian. <laughs> I am warrior. <laughs> I am done with her name for a while, Kristen. Ah, oh, shit. I just said it after I was done with it. And Jesse's like, I think that they should get in a car and drive back to Colorado for the rest of this summer. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what a threat. <laughs> Please get out of my life seasonally. Thank you. <laughs> so Jason and Janet's house, um, they're talking about the, the dinner party. And um, Janet's like, could you set a timer for me for eight minutes, please? And he's like, Alexa, could you set a timer for 18 minutes? And she's like, yeah, I could have yelled at Alexa too. Then why didn't you? That's, <laughs> then fucking do it. Power play. I love that. I love people who are mad that Alexa has replaced their bossing around of their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been my job. Like, I should have been bossing you around. Like, what are you, not an Alexa anymore? Okay, Jason, Sing something by Katy Perry. <laughs> well, I've got it, Katy Perry. Not you, you fucking interloper. <laughs> Jason, would you get me some flour out of the pantry, please? Reordering flour gold, <laughs> which you just ordered off of Amazon two weeks ago. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Jenna just wants her orders to be taken by specific people, mainly yes. her husband. She's furious that her husband's job has been taken by an assistant. <laughs> You know, I never use um, I never use Siri to set it, uh, timers, and I really should because oh, I do all the time. When I'm cooking all the time, I'm like, hold on, gotta stop this process to go press this button over here or do that over there. I mean, I have like an OXO timer, which I, I enjoy oh. having a thing that sits there and I can always look over to it. But there are times where I'm like, oh, gotta take out the phone. No, because I gotta remember you to do that. Her, you, you and you can set multiple timers. You can say, "Hey Jennifer" or whatever her name is. You know, we shouldn't keep saying Jennifer that over and over. But like Jennifer, could you like set a timer for fifteen minutes? And she's like, "Sure, a timer set for fifteen minutes." You want to name the timer? I'm like, "Yeah, name it, bitch." And she's like, "Hey, bitch is going off in the kitchen, <laughs> bitch." I'm like, "Yes." Hey, could you set another one for the fish? She's like, "Yes, fish timer." I'm like, "Yes." She does like multiple ones, and then while you're doing stuff, you could be like, "So, how much time is left, Jennifer?" And she'll be like. Like, you've got five minutes left on bitch and, you know, four minutes left on fuck you and then three <laughs> minutes left on your face. Also, Jennifer, is it true that Michelle's a Republican? <laughs> yeah. She'd be like, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Kristen should have been like, oh, I didn't articulate it. Jennifer, the digital assistant, did. So, um, anyway. Zach so told me to do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> didn't realize that was a period um so janet says it's a robot period yeah no totally that's how robots isn't it funny it took so long to get robots to have like more human cadences because for the longest time it, everything was sounded like that you are going on the fastest route I'm like okay <laughs> they were all angie, angie from uh, real house <laughs> they're all angie like city. yeah so jason uh janet's like so do you remember at the dinner party Kristen said something like, Michelle, I love you and I always protect you. And Jason's like, yeah, I've heard her say that a couple of, like, like three times. Like, I don't know what that would, like, probably mean. Yeah. Well, the only thing I've ever heard that, the only thing I've ever heard Michelle 
promised to protect is the Constitution. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. <laughs> the only thing I've heard Michelle say that she wants to protect is the sanctity of marriage. So, <laughs> <laughs> Janet's like, <laughs> Janet's like, I don't know if you're deposing someone and they said, like, what would you do if you're deposing someone and they said something like that? He's like, I would say, protect her from what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I have such a boner right now. Like, can you yeah. back me? Can you back me up, Jennifer? What would you say, Jennifer? I would say, protect her from what? Question mark. And your timer's ready. If I was in court right now, I would say, judge, we've got A, which is next to B, but very close to C. So does that make A and C cousins, or does it just make them friends? What about D? Who's D? Oh my God, the semantics. The semantics. <sighs> like, I'm sorry my boner is tapping up against your window, but the semantics of it all. Can we remove juror number three? <laughs> oh no, but there's so many more semantics to hear. I am guilty of semantics boners. <sighs> Don't be anti-semantic. <laughs> so then um, Jason's like, yeah, I would be like, what are you, Al Capone? Pay me two grand a month for protection? Know what I mean? And she goes, yeah. Like, what is she saying? Protection like like his own guys? What, what, a protection against his own people? And he's like, yeah. She goes, yeah, there's just something about it. It not only stuck with me, but it also stuck with Brittany and Jasmine. And then we cut to Brittany and Jasmine. And Jasmine's like, I let me tell you what. Let me tell you. Let me let me tell you what I think about that party. I cannot. I, can't. <laughs> I won't, and I can't. And Brittany is like, or was it Brittany? Was it Jasmine? Brittany. Brittany was. I think it was. I don't know. She goes. She goes. <laughs> she actually said to me, "I could ruin people's lives, but I'm not going to do. I'm. I'm not going to do it for my own sanity." Yeah. And so Janet's like, yeah, sounds like Kristen has something on Michelle and she's trying to threaten her with it. It just feels icky to me. If I was Michelle, I'd probably assume that I'm going to come home and find a horse head in my bed. And then she kind of winks at the camera like, yeah, I said it. <laughs> I made a horse head joke. That's right. Yeah. Horse Potter. head, Al Capone. Yeah. So We're Janet's like. <laughs> Say Janet's hello like, to my little friend and my right bitch. <laughs> just doing all the Al Pacino movies. Untouchables, Godfather. Um, so, uh, you smell. Jan no, that was scent of a woman, honey. It's not a mob. <laughs> Still, though. <laughs> hey, Alexa, can you turn on the heat? <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, uh, what, Janet what am says, I about? She, Janet's like, I've worked for the past, for the last six years until I was pregnant as a personal assistant. So I am a planner. And, you know, I love, you know, putting together parties. And I became, oh, she's just talking about this gala. Sorry. <laughs> I thought she was making a larger point about Kristen. So she's they're doing they're going to gala, which is funny because I don't think in the history of Vanderpump Rules they ever came close to anything that was close to a gala. I think the closest they got was actually like maybe using a gala apple and a martini once. But uh, they're going well, to do is this. Very, thing. This is very the Valley style gla uh, gala where they're like, "How much are we going to spend? You have ten dollars. That is your. <laughs> that is all we're spending." <laughs> no. like, okay. um, it is fun. That is no better than hilarious. Hilarious. They're like. Hit, a minion to laws, please. <laughs> it's how it's it in France and Brazil, where I'm probably born. <laughs> All my currency is from the world. It's world currency. Hmm. So I'm giving you 20 million pound peso liers. <laughs> so basically, there's this gala, and they're going to go to it, and then they've got a seating chart, and everything, and so they're since the whole cast is going, they're going to have to like separate out into different tables because of Kaka Kristen. Yes, and um, they show the guy, their friend Jared. I think it's Jared, right? Yeah, Jared Lex. Um Jared got stem cells that saved his life. And so now he has a charity. And Jared tells people off because this is how he talks. He's like, you want to hear about it? Let me tell you what Kristen did. Like, I, I can't <laughs> wait to see more of Jared. But Jared started a charity in Los Angeles, of all places, called Be The Match. Did no, he start it. it? He started it. Or, I think so. I mean, it, it, it says, regardless. Um, wait, 
I became aware of the Be The Match organization and the gal itself through my best friend, Jared. Oh, no, I don't think he started it. I think he's just throwing a party for it. It's just weird to have a, a gala in LA called Be The Match because you literally can't even smoke at the bottom of a hill there. They're like, we are all going to die if you do that. <laughs> so I just feel I like it's like an it. unsafe <laughs> way. To, it's unsafe. <laughs> like, you can have this, just not in the hills or anywhere near it. <laughs> Some of you get very confused, and between all these charities on these shows, they're, they're going to donate to something called Be the Homeless. <laughs> but not the Toothless. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he, yeah, so he, there's this organization, they're going to a gala for it, and um, they have to figure out, you know, the, the, the planner is like, um, well, we have two tables, but the big concern, or maybe this is Jared who was saying it, saying like, I've got some crazy texts from from Kristen and um, Janet's yeah, like, you know what? Jared. Kristen may have known Jared longer, but Jared and I have gotten unbelievably close over the last couple of years. So the last thing I want or will allow is any drama to ruin this night. I'm like, I'm sure Jared would love drama at his event. I know if I, if listen, we gays love it. Like if, if I'm, if I'm hosting a charity event, there better be some drama on the side that I can watch from afar and be like, what happened? Tell me everything. Oh my God, that really happened. That's great. Yeah, I'll never oh, forget. Yeah. Jared does want it because he's like, okay, we're going to talk about seating at the charity. And let me tell you why. Because Kristen is starting some shit. And she better not do that at my charity because I will tell you one thing. I will kick her ass. You know what? You know what this is about? Kidneys. This is about kidneys, Kristen. It's not about you. Okay. It is about people needing a liver. Okay. That's why I brought this, these two cans. No, not kidney beans and actual chopped liver, Kristen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know how much I care for you. Oh, no. Um, so oh. Janet's, Janet's like, yeah, it's just like she's so, like, Delulu. And he's like, Jason's like, Delulu? Alexa, what is Delulu? <laughs> delusional, you idiot. How are you a lawyer? So now we go over to Kaka's apartment. And, um, oh, there was, there, someone asked me in a DM why we call her Kaka. We're not calling, they, were, they said, why are you calling her Kaka? We're not calling her Kaka. It's because one time they went to Mexico <laughs> and Kristen walked out on the balcony of her room and went, oh, it's a bird. Kaka! <laughs> and like, talked to the bird. And we have just never gotten over it. That was like one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just so it was great. Just, so we so just go, Kaka. Oh my God, look, there's birds outside. Coco! Coco! <laughs> um, Classic so, Kristen. So she's like, I don't know what to wear to the gala tomorrow. I'm going through with all my gowns. I'm like, did I wear this one to Jared's event? Did I wear that one to Jared's event before? Kristen acting like she has a whole bunch of like <laughs> ball gowns in her apartment. I know. <laughs> They're just t-shirts that just that say, so I'm sorry I said it. Yeah, she's like, I may not know what I'm going to wear tomorrow on my body, but I do know there are going to be Burks on my feet. Call, call. <laughs> Can we let the Birkenstocks just, like, let's at least pretend we care about Jared's kidney. You know what I mean? Yeah, so she's like, ah, oh, we'll be sitting at a table with the people that we like, like Nia and Danny, and I believe Jackson Britt, so we like them again now. Maybe Zach. I'm not sure. I don't know if Janet's not gonna is like now gonna go over and like take and decide who gets to sit where, but it's not really that important to me. As long as I'm supporting Jared, you know? We're at a table with people who match our kind of energy. So in other words, a table of people who just keep falling out of their chairs. <laughs> She's like, Zach and I were finally able to make up after Capri. Okay, now you're all going to say Capri? I don't think you all can say Capri. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Only the guy who claims to go there to meet billionaires can say it because he's douchey enough to like, it makes sense in his personality. To the rest of you, please don't do it, okay? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's how they say it in Italy. But, you know, we don't come back from France saying, can I have a croissant? <laughs> to be fair, it did take Kristen about three years to stop calling it cat pee. So uh, she's like, well, you know what? We both realized that we were just pawns in Janet's giant manipulation game. Kaka. Janet really loves the shit talking, the planting of seeds, the lighting the match, lighting seeds on fire, fire seeds, forest fires down the hill. Everyone's on fire. The city's going to burn all because of Janet. So you will be donating to the match? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Looks like, okay, that's it. We're going to go. We're going to go. 
Well, I am Luke's like, I am leaving. It's like Luke is our apartment. Oh, yeah, right. I will stay then. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? Here's what I feel like happened. Everybody wanted you to fall on the knife for him, Kristen. I mean, so okay, maybe you slipped up and betrayed some trust, but you didn't make up this narrative. Okay. And that's not fair for you to have to take it on. And let me tell you what's gonna happen the next time someone calls you. I'm gonna be right here on the phone listening with this ear, just <laughs> like I am to every single call. I can guarantee you that spam likely, motherfucker, you better be ready for me to walk off, kind of. Um, this is so that show that no one is um, wealthy enough to actually own a sword to fall onto, so they have to fall onto a knife instead. It's like, oh, she wants him to fall on the knife. <laughs> maybe someday a sword. <laughs> but right now, just a knife. Maybe, a, maybe, a, sword. maybe a long nail. <laughs> but for now, yeah, you better, you better watch out, Spork, because you're going to get fallen on. So Kristen's like, now they're starting this whole thing. Like she goes, I think that Janet is taking advantage of the fact that none of us are going to attack her while she's pregnant. Well, fuck that. I will attack you while you're pregnant, bitch. So the <laughs> baby Kristen, no longer is going to be protected. <laughs> but literally, what did Janet do? I think Janet did exactly what all of us have done. And I mean, both sides of the political spectrum, because I'm, and like you pointed out earlier, Republicans do this to Democrats all the time, where it's like, oh, really? Well, guess who doesn't care about the welfare of the children? Ronnie. He's probably a groomer because he is a liberal. <laughs> you know, like, we've all done it in our way, but everybody who's a real liberal in L.A. has been like, oh, my God, did you hear this person is a Republican? That's some racist <laughs> bullshit, and I don't want to hang out with them. I'm a part Everyone's done it. Like, both sides have done it. So I don't understand why Kristen's trying to make it this, like, Janet sits there, and she comes up with ways. She comes up with ways to tear us apart. Well, that that's has that's, I don't think manipulation. I don't think that that has anything to do with – you know, people uh, on, on political spectrums. I think it just has to do with the fact that, like, Janet said this thing, and then it, it, like, blew up into something, and then she walks away, and she doesn't have any heat on her. And, in fact, Michelle's like, yeah, no, everything's fine. We're fine. Whereas Chris has to take all the heat. So she's like, fuck that. She's the one who started this gossip, and I'm the one who's getting, I'm the one who's getting my head bitten off for it, when Janet's the one who started blabbing in the first place. Not fair. Caca. So, Luke, Luke is like, listen, ignore the drama, ignore the people that you want. Here, do you want to pretend like you want to leave the apartment real quickly? I'm leaving. That was so fun. Okay. But you know what? Like, the whole purpose of this is like, is not to have a conversation, you know? And she's like, yeah, about anything else. Because exactly. He's like, come on, come on, fighter. Stay on message. You can do yes. this. Okay. I've done no therapy yelling. twice. I've done therapy twice this week, just over this group of people. And he goes, you don't have to tell me twice, babe, because I'm ready to get out of this awful city whenever you are. Oh, okay, okay. It's the city's fault. Yeah. He's yeah, like, can exactly. we just go back to a place where it's okay to accuse somebody of trying to burn down, you know, AOC's office? <laughs> <laughs> For Christ's sake. Really, she had it coming. Okay. <laughs> so Kristen's like, I'm ovulating today, bitch. He's like, I know. I'm leaving. So then um, now the guys, three of the guys, and they have to pack up their babies to go to a fair. You were just saying yesterday about like the prevalence of um, carnival games, et cetera, on these shows lately. And here they are going to the Ventura County Fair. Every so, week. This show's like three for three. Last week was at the ski ball place, the adult like ski ball place. The week before was the county fair party. I mean, and then they went to the two bit circus. Was that the same episode I'm talking about? It's like literally every episode is a circus. Yeah. A, this, at this point, it's just got to be on purpose. So then, yeah, it's three men and the babies. So they go to the fair and um, they're all talking about how <laughs> the, my, my wife won't even bang me these days, guys. Yeah, the usual the usual thing. I love that these guys are like really so awful and then they're like shocked that no one wants to have sex with them. Yeah. Like they just take themselves out of the equation. So they're well, driving. Brittany actually does want to have sex with her husband. That's Brittany is like the one that's kind of like going against the the stereotype of the what the men complaining about their wives, you know. <laughs> Brittany's like, he won't even buy me. I'm like a tumbleweed without a dick in it. Like, what do I have to do? Go ch chase him down at the AM, FM? <laughs> what, what's, what's supposed to happen? Yeah. Um, and let me promise you this. Jax is getting it somewhere. 
Okay. Yes. Jax is not going to just be celibate for two years. So, yeah. and you know, like we said and in episode one, that's what he's doing on his AM. Yeah, he's doing it on his AM PM runs for sure. So, uh, so they're driving in the minivan, and Jack's like, "So, uh, what you guys think about the other night? Oh, pretty nice, huh?" And Danny's like, "Yeah, it was awesome. Beautiful food. It was amazing. No drama. It was just, you know, what's the right word to describe it?" <laughs> it's like Danny, we don't speak zombie. <laughs> You don't speak zombie, Danny. So they're just gossiping. And Jack's, of course, the hero of everything. He's like, you know, me and Kristen are like so close, guys. So close. Me and Kristen. You know, I love her to death. But like, I just don't know how much I can keep protecting Kristen. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hard protecting Kristen, but also like protecting like neighborhoods from Kristen procreating. You know what I mean? I'm just like doing all I can. I'm doing all I can, guys. I guess that's the theme of this show is protecting people. And Danny's like, yeah, well, uh, she says she's done. Like, she's like worked on herself so much during therapy. It's like, yeah, but like, I just don't, I don't understand what like needs to be done. Like, who's your therapist? Because that person needs to be fired. Am I right, everyone? So Jesse's like, hey, Isabella, I just saw a sign that said you got to put your shoes and socks on if you want to go to the fair. She's like, I didn't see a sign, you motherfucker. He's like, God damn it, she got me again. <laughs> so now they're. They're going into the, they go into the fair. They're like walking around doing fair things. <laughs> Cruz goes and picks, starts picking up like goat shit. And Jack's like, no, 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 no. Stop picking up the metaphor of your mother and I's relationship. Stop that. <laughs> uh, um, so now they start talking about therapy and Jesse's like, our therapy sucks. Okay. Because like the life coach is like, don't touch her. Don't make comments about her ass because she said she was like uncomfortable when I said how hot she was. Jack's like, she doesn't like you giving her compliments, which is such a man thing to do. It's like, what? I complimented you. I said you were really hot. You didn't even have the decency to say thank you. <laughs> Who gets mad at being called toots? It's a fucking <laughs> compliment. I'm not like I slapped her face. I slapped her ass. I mean, Jesus Christ, you can't even communicate with waitresses anymore. <laughs> Uh, he's like, I'm dealing with just the opposite. I don't do it enough. And he goes, I think it's safe to say that the romantic spark is just not there right now. And I will take the blame. Yeah, I let that spark fizzle. It's just not fair to either one of us, especially not fair to my wife. She deserves to have a man who loves her and uh, isn't going to AM, PM quite so much as I am, if you know what I'm saying. So Danny's like, guys, guys, I know you've probably heard this before, but I like how he turns into kind of Matthew McConaughey as he gets like he deeper does. deeper in I the conversation. That. Guys, guys, hey, uh, answer me this. Riddle me this, Batman. Y'all heard of love languages? They're like, what the fuck, man? He's like, yeah, love languages. That's, you got to know how to communicate with your woman. Now, this is what I do with mine. This is what she loves to hear the most. So I speak in, yes, honey, whatever you need, honey. And we're just happy as pies. Are pies happy? I mean, they're <laughs> smiles and friends put together. Those are called circles. <laughs> Wouldn't say that in front of my wife. She doesn't like pie talk. She does like to hear yes, though. So I say that a lot. <laughs> Am I repressing my inner rage right now? Perhaps. Am I deeply unhappy? I don't know. Have my eyes turned into black little orbs because I have so many unspoken things on my mind? Quite possibly. But uh, love languages, they're really working out well for me. Uh, three under two. <laughs> three under two. Uh, uh, what's that theme from Wolf of Wall Street that Matthew McConaughey does? Because you know that Danny does that in the bathroom all the time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that stupid thing. Jesse's like, yeah, Michelle used to show up in my house wearing a trench coat, and then she'd uh, she'd like let me tie her up and like pour hot wax over her back. Now I can't even get a candle lit in my own house without her being like, it doesn't smell right. It doesn't smell right. <laughs> Danny just goes, life changes, man. Just got to figure it out. That's his way of saying, I don't know what to do with that one. No, you guys like, are fucked. What? That's a lot. <laughs> That's, that's that's a lot. lot of information to just drop ca so casually at the fair. Yeah, <laughs> she used to show up naked. I tie her up and pour hot shit on her. So uh, <laughs> I don't know where, where those days go. <laughs> so Jack's like, like, I don't, I don't want change. life to change. So it's not had issues. Like I want to sex like three to four times a day, all day, every day. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, do we do it this month? Are we going to do it this month? Yeah, so who mm -hmm. are you fucking three to four times a day at the AM, PM? This is when, this is like when he was like, oh my God, I have to go to the gym five times a day. 
I just can't stop going to the gym. Yeah, I'll bet you can't. <laughs> so now we go to Christian and Luke on date night. And so they're walking um, up Robertson and they walk right by Sir, which is kind of funny because at first they're like, oh, Sir, of course. And they're like, wait, that's not this show. And they walk by and Kristen's just like, all right, we're going to go to a restaurant. Not this one. Hold on one second. Suck a dick, Diana. <laughs> okay, let's keep walking. Let's go to Soulmate. <laughs> hey, Joe, if you, if you still work there, your soup sucks, Joe. <laughs> um yeah i think that it's funny that Kristen lives in the valley but she's going to dinner right next to sir to get that attention it's so sally field going to the mall to get recognized yeah in the soap dish so um so they they get there and they make a toast to uh, making babies and Kristen's like wow we should book tickets to go see your brother and looks like yeah I, like yeah we can do that in fact you know what we should go do those tickets right now. You know what? I am leaving. I am out of here. I am. Luke, you don't have to do that in literally every room that we're in. <sighs> Can I take your order? Yes. I will have an Uber because I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> okay. Felt better. That was a good appetizer, huh, honey? I just. So. I will, you know, I want to spend some time in Colorado in the fall before it gets like too cold. Oh, caca. And Luke's basically saying that like his whole life, everything he's built up has been in Colorado. Uh, cause he does own like 70 acres out there or something. And he's like, yeah, we just have a better circle out there. I think a lot of people, if they're like true down to earth, good people, like that's what they are. But like LA is not, LA is not all douchebags, but maybe only like 90%. So now I'm like, okay, I'm starting to pick up why the guys all hate this guy. Cause he is, he is actually a dick. Yeah, um, I don't get great Luke vibes. I said that episode one. I don't like him. I think he's got weird anger issues. Um, I don't like him. I feel it's also like also you're hanging out with Kristen, Kim. so you can pretty much guarantee it's not a good one. You know what I it's mean? It's like, sir, you have hitched your wagon to a, a horse that's been well documented to be um, pretty unstable, and you've now gone into the barnyard with all these animals, and like you can't judge the city based on these clowns you're hanging out with right now. And also, like, yeah, I don't believe him. Because he's one of those people who just doesn't want to be looked down for being an L.A. person. So they say how much they hate L.A. all the time. Yet he moved there and he does a podcast. And he's dating uh, who was at the time an ex-reality star doing a podcast. And now he's wormed his way onto her reality show. So, yeah, I don't really believe that you don't want anything to do with L.A. You wouldn't fucking be dating a reality person, dude. You just wouldn't also, like... If you loved Colorado so much, why didn't you just stay in Colorado and date someone there or say, like, Kristen, if you want to date me, you have to move out here. I'm not going to L.A. But you can't, like, pretend to move out to L.A. and be like, oh, I love it here. And then be like, no, actually, I really want to go back to Colorado. No, I do not play those games, sir. Yeah. And so... She's like, yeah, I mean, my friends can talk about me and Luke. We've only been together 15 minutes, but, and they've been in long marriages, blah, blah. But like, they're like threatened by a really hot giant penis. All right. And he's like, he's like 32. And that's like why you date 32 year olds. Cause they can go all night long. Yeah. Penis. And then she does her like shimmy thing with her head shake in the camera. She's like, yeah, 31 year old penis. Yeah. Yeah. We get home. We're going to sa- have sex, smoke some weed, have more sex. And then Luke is like, yeah, as long as I've got like 10 minutes in between, we're good. Because otherwise, I am out of there. I am I'm leaving. I am leaving if I don't get a break. So then Danny and Nia, um, they're getting dressed for the gala. And then um, Luke's talking about how they're going to have a date night. I don't know. What are they talking no, about? No, so what happens well, while, this while Danny and Nia are like setting up for the, for like, not setting up, but like getting dressed or whatever. Um, uh or are showing not getting dressed, but showing off the looks and everything. He's talking about how he and Brittany basically helped set up this romantic date for Luke and um, Luke and Kristen. Oh, so basically, okay. Brittany. Yeah, I forgot. yeah. So oh, because he's going. I'm sorry, he's going to be doing this. Wow, this timeline is very tricky in this section. He's going to be helping because Luke has asked Danny to help set up and put out rose petals and everything. So um, Danny is uh, Danny and Brittany are going to be doing that. So then we go back to soulmate. And Luke is talking about how, um, you know, like, you know, having a family and everything, like wondering, like, where's the best landing spot? And Kristen's like, so here's my thinking. California is like very important to me. Like, I can't leave California. I have like 
so much nothing obligations over here that like i just can't i can't leave oh Kristen, you'll you'll be fine you're going to montana you can wear burks there you know what i mean it's not like you're going to a land where you have to change your shoes <laughs> okay <laughs> you you'll fit in more in montana maybe and she says that she's not really married to la but hi she just got back on tv so fuck that. <laughs> yeah, so that's, then, that's what she's really saying, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's a long conversation for him to pretend he doesn't want to be on TV while he's on TV, sucking all of this up. So then we go to um, Brittany meeting Danny to set up the romantic massage night that they. <laughs> so Danny's like, oh my God, I peed myself a little bit, guys, because instead of that dog being named Jill, I think Killer would have been a better name. I almost got killed by dog setting up a night for my wife almost died i have something to say here um i think it's generally generally speaking i think it's like very very funny when people name their pets very like ordinary human names like i once met a dog named bob <laughs> and that was like hilarious to me there once was a show on cbs about like it's called like the great great american dog and or something like that and there was a dog named andrew and i just was like it was just like very funny but that being said who names their german shepherd jill <laughs> it's just like jill this is jill this is jill i mean i was like cracking up but i'm also thinking like i feel like most people have like more fun names for their dogs than Jill. And it's nothing against the Jills that we all know and love. Nothing against Jill's Aaron. <laughs> but why are you naming your German Shepherd Jill? Yeah. I like you know, I like a good human name, like a little, hey, it's my dog Ruth. You know? I, like <laughs> I would love my that. Dog. Oh my God. I would totally name a dog Ruth. A hundred percent. But yeah. Jill is just it just cracks me up, Jill. <laughs> yeah, Jill. It's, it's just like my basic dog. Big, my scary basic, dog. Very Jill. basic dog. <laughs> so then um, Brittany's like, oh, I'm so happy to make a party for Luke and Christian, but I can't help but think tumbleweeds. Am I right? <laughs> I'm crying right now. I'm laughing. I don't really know. <laughs> I have been begging him, please do something romantic for me. Like at least put out some triscuits and cheese whiz. And now I'm setting up somebody else's romantic self instead. <laughs> cry, 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 cry. I told him, hey, you better take notes. Look what Luke is doing for Christine. Mm. <laughs> I mean, technically, you're doing it. So, I yeah. think it's pretty fitting, you know. So, back at Soulmate, now they're talking about uh, how Danny made a good point about, you know, a premarital counselor. And, you know, we none of us really understand what it's like the money and the time it goes into raising a baby and we should talk about it with someone professional you know hopefully someone professional who doesn't live in la <laughs> okay let's, uh, let's get a montana professional okay <laughs> i want them to be able to use a rope on a pig yeah well you know uh they're talking about like um yeah, they talk about this sort of stuff. And Chris is like, well, my big, I'm, you know, I'm the biggest worry worth that you know. So that is not something that I ever worry about. Like kids growing up in California, in Los Angeles, in the Valley, specifically with our group of people. You know, it takes a village, or in our case, it takes um, a bunch of RVs. And you know what? We're going to do it. Yeah. So then people are driving to the, to the gala. And Brittany and Jax and Janet are all together in one car. And um, this is where they're like, wait a minute, how much money? Janet's like, Jason, how much money do I get to spend for the kidneys? And Jason's like, 2500 And Jax is like, yeah, Brittany, we need to talk about that. I mean, people don't really need their kidneys. I don't think that is kind of the point. It's like kind of like your gallbladder or your ear. <laughs> like, who needs them? Am I right? I'm like, no, oh, no. Really, all people need is a mouth and a nose. <laughs> Sometimes not even a mouth. Let's be honest. Dick. Is it a dick transplant? Otherwise, we're spending $5. And that's it, Brittany. She's like, well, wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, he's basically like, um, yeah, our kid has to go to school now. And uh, AM, PM, those, those bills, like those coffees don't pay for themselves. So uh, $10 budget. And here's a stack of coupons you can also leave at the table uh, next to the item you want. And she's like, but why? And so he says like 2000 but like we all know afterwards when the cameras weren't there he was like it's gonna be like 45 dollars yeah 
Nobody on the show is giving twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> no one is. That. No one is. <laughs> so they so, go to the gala. Be the match. And um, Jax is like, "Oh my god, I need a hors d'oeuvre." <laughs> this is um, this is like a, a proper gala. Like this is at the Skirball Center, which is like a nice place, and there's like lots of people there. This is this is a full on true gala, <laughs> and I don't know what any of these jokers are doing here. Like they don't they they seem like ill equipped for this experience. Natasha. <laughs> so then um more people come and Jason's like, Oh my god, I feel so underdressed next to Danny. Look at how good Danny looks. And Danny's like, Yeah, I thought for sure, man, you were gonna be dressed with a tux and a bow tie. I mean, I like attention, but I don't need to be the best looking and the best dressed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah danny's like self-conscious about like dressing nicely did you also catch this moment where um like a waiter or a waitress uh came by with like there was like one mac and cheese ball it's like anyone anyone want this mac and cheese ball anyone want it and then like no one was taking it so Brittany was like well i'm hungry i'm gonna take it so she takes it and then she like eats it and she's like well i'm hungry and then Jax goes so are all of us sort of implying like have some self-control i was like wow classic Jax. Oh, gross just when you just when you uh thought jesse was the worst Jax is always there to remind us that you know he's the number one asshole in this group yeah god gross dude and also not shocking at all um so then uh, michelle and jesse come and Zach's like, oh my god, Jesse, look at that jacket. He looks like he's walking into a bar in Miami in the 80s, and he's about to snort a line of cocaine the length of the bar. So basically, like, Jax is at breakfast. <laughs> yeah, and, like, Debbie Harry's playing because it's the 80s, and that's why there's cocaine there, and that's why it's on a bar, but it's, like, a very long bar. I just want to illustrate that this is a particularly long bar, which means it's a particularly long line of cocaine. It's, like, Okay, Zach, we got we got your we got your joke. So um, John Johnson is there, probably a Republican. You heard it from Janet first. <laughs> so Jason's like, "Wow, Jesse, this blazer. So you wear this all day? You show a house in this?" He's like, "Nah, nah. This is like a real dinner jacket, man. Yeah." So um, Jax takes Jesse to the bar while Jasmine and Ian, and Britt and Zach are talking about Kristen. And Zach is like, so is Kristen at our table or your table? And Brittany's like, my table. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, she could have been at our table too. Yeah, it's like a battle. She's at like, your table. And Jasmine's like, well, I said I don't care. I just, listen, I can fake it. I can be like, bless your heart. And so she's like, yeah, I don't know if Kristen's going to start a scene. You just don't know with her, but I'm just going to have to love her from afar for the moment because she's crazy. So Nia's like, look, I'm trying to chug my wine so I can go pump my breast milk, you know? I mean, I know that doesn't make much sense, but. Yeah. And then um, so now Kristen shows up alone and everything. And Luke isn't there because Jill is super, super sick. She has diarrhea. Everyone, Jill has diarrhea. That's actually not a human. It's a dog named Jill. And the dog has diarrhea, but she will be fine. It's like, thank <laughs> just thanks, thanks for announcing the diarrhea that your dog is experiencing to this, it's just this so, fancy gal. Oh, it's like the things they catch on the mics, because they're actually talking kind of quiet, but the, the producer's are like, you know that part about the diarrhea? Make sure we get that in there. Make sure. <laughs> I want the camera to look like it's kind of sneaking around the guys just so we can catch this very secret conversation. We have cameras here, right? Okay, let's get that. Print it. And they, <laughs> they listen to the audio later. It's like, diarrhea. Yeah. She's got diarrhea pretty bad. Brittany's like, oh my god, diarrhea. Jill's like, did you have to? You know, I'm not even a cast member on this show. I first of all, I got interrupted by two people who I thought were intruders. They're not my mother nor my father. And then they just left all these delicious rose petals around. How was I supposed to know they were a laxative for me? Exactly. It's the rose petals. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, flashback uh, to Jesse yelling, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up at the dinner party. And Brittany's like, um, they're still talking about the dog pooping because of the dog pedal or the flower pedals. 
<laughs> move on to of the rose petals. <laughs> <laughs> this really did keep going. That's funny. And Chris is like, I don't think it was a rose petal. And Brittany's like, really? Because I hope that that dog had those rose petals and every time it's pooping, it's thinking, Brittany deserves better. <laughs> How you ever see that tumbleweed go by, followed by diarrhea, dog diarrhea? So Kristen's like, yeah, well, I think she accidentally ate something. And uh, cause, like the, over the weekend, she was fine. But like she had diarrhea in my apartment before and i just didn't want to have diarrhea in the new apartment so anyway god there's been so much diarrhea i mean it's just like you walk in it's just like diarrhea here diarrhea there everywhere diarrhea everywhere diarrhea okay, you know what i'm saying okay it's enough diarrhea talk for me not enough i've reached my limit of the d word the d talking all right did you say i was the d word <laughs> So Michelle's like, my strategy is not to pay attention to Kristen. I'm a woman. I'm elbow skin. I'm a clown car. I'm a noun. I'm Kristen a is Kristen I'm is like a so. cake for gay people against my religious beliefs, and I shall ignore her. I just keep thinking to myself, charity event. So I hope Kristen doesn't ruin another night. So now everybody sits down, and um, Kristen sits with Brittany. She's like, oh, my God, thank God. I prefer this table to the other table. Hey, can you believe that we had to arrange tables based on who to be around who? <laughs> like, welcome to reality TV, Zach. I was like, oh, how the tables have turned. Because, you know, we were it's a table situation. So it's like, it, what it really is is a play on words. Now imagine the tables were in the 80s, okay? Are we there? Are we visualizing it? Because the joke is going to continue. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, I just wanted to take this moment to apologize to you because I didn't really do anything to you. That was all like Kristen, but I mean, I did it to you by proxy. So, like, I'm sorry by proxy. Okay. She's like, it's okay. I'm like, what? What? And she's like, you know what? I'm sure there was some sort of conversation that happened between Janet, Jasmine, and Zach, but they never brought it up. They didn't tell it to everybody. So it's like, okay. So again, you actually are not upset about the allegations. You're just upset that people might think about the allegations or might know yes. about the allegations. Drawing attention to the allegations. But my thing is, like, I just want to move forward from it. And so, like, maybe you could just talk to Kristen and be like, listen, I don't want to say forgive you, but, like, I'm willing to move past that because I know you want an apology and I feel like she's willing to give you an apology. Also, there's, like, a Kesha CD in the silent auction. I was wondering if you could spot me $10. <laughs> Someone I hope never stays silent again, Kasha. Yeah, hey, there's like a Willa Ford poster over there. Do you have about $45 to the silent auction? So um, he's like, it's my duty as someone who comes about Kristen to get the second car off. So over at Kristen's table, Mia's like, so you guys did a whole setup at Kristen's place with flowers? Like, how did that go? Tell us about it. Was it magical? <laughs> and Kristen's like, yeah, we used a massage table, but I didn't get a massage. <laughs> I was ovulating. Yeah, yeah. We had sex. Um, and Jack's so like... Is this it? You knocked up? <laughs> you think that was one? You think that was a little pounder that got yeah. you? Yeah. That was real magical. It was real magical. We were like doing it, but also talking about how to raise the children in LA. It was great. And Nia's like, and you were laying flat, right? No legs up. Ah. And so um, then Jesse, over Jesse's table, they're talking, they're telling the story about how they met. There's someone was like, tell us your love story, which is more like, tell us your future hate story. So Jess is like, yeah, well, we had uh, we had an office meeting, and I was like, why don't we meet for coffee? And she's like, yeah, and then we were supposed to like have a date night, and I was like, wow, this guy's terrible. He has a terrible personality. I don't understand how he's ever a model. He has a dent in his hair. I never want to see him again. Yeah. And now we're married. Let me tell you the real story. We had coffee. I knew he wasn't the one, but I was attracted to him. <laughs> so here we are, married with a baby. I was like, wow, this is I'm in the lo story. world's longest booty call. Yeah, she says. Uh, so I, she says I canceled our date because I hated him, but then I went out with my girlfriends instead, and I got really drunk and I wanted a booty call. So it's just like the booty call that never ended. <laughs> <laughs> Let this be a lesson to people. So yeah, I don't know what that Zach, lesson is really, but um, yeah, which is don't. 
date people like Jesse. So <laughs> Zach is, he's like trying to help things out. He's like, okay, Michelle and Jesse, like, do you want to like come talk with Kristen? Let's do this. Would it be okay if we chat for a moment? Like, I feel like tonight's been like such a positive night. Like, I totally won the vitamin C cassette. So I think we're just like ride that high. And I feel like if you two just like pull together, I think it'd be a good idea to, for us all to talk. How do you feel about that, guys? So then um, they go outside to talk, like the summit. And Jesse's like, babe, are you cold? And Michelle's like, yeah, I'm cold. And he's like, wow. And he doesn't give her his jacket. <laughs> so then Michelle's like, let's just try to relax and let Kristen speak right now. And he goes, oh, I'm plenty relaxed. I'm plenty relaxed. She's like, I would be too if I just wasn't freezing to death. <laughs> yeah, sucks for you. Okay, here they come. Here they come. So Kristen's like, oh, Michelle, I just want to say I love you. I love you so, so much. And I know more than anyone how harmful like words can be. And when they're put on you, when they're completely not true. <laughs> and I said something I should not have repeated. Michelle goes, and I think that's why we're upset because you keep saying the word repeated and everybody is denying that comment. Well, oh, we just had this conversation. Like, remember? Because like Jasmine, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, oh, really? You said the word Jasmine. Oh my fucking God. Forget it. Are you kidding? Oh, sorry. This is Je Jesse. Oh my fucking God. Forget it. Are you fucking kidding Jesus Christ. Oh, no, no, we're going backwards. We're going backwards. Ride the high, people. Ride the high. So Kristen's like, well, she's saying, you're saying, because I'm saying the word repeated, but it's like, I feel like when we just sit down after dinner, everyone sort of owned what they did. Like, I'm apologizing. I'm re-apologizing. Like, okay, that's all I want you to know. Like, I just want you to know that I'm sorry, and you don't have to accept it if you don't want to, but I am so, so so sorry. I just, I just need space. I need like some, I, like I, I can't have you in my face. I almost want like, it's like we need like something in between us so we can have space. Like I think like I want to build a wall. Like let's just build that wall between us right now. <laughs> and Kristen's like, it's okay. It's up to you. I just want you to know. And I hope that you believe that I'm sorry. And you know me, Michelle. And she goes, um, you know what I believe? I believe that you need some help. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, welcome to the party, Michelle. I mean, have you watched the past 10 years of reality TV? <laughs> and Kristen's like, oh, yeah, I've been going to therapy for nine years. So, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Hey, so, like, Kristen, do you and Jesse, like, possibly want to talk? Like, maybe I can go to the other room and, like, listen to some of Jason's semantics. And Kristen's like, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, Jesse, Michelle means a lot to me, and I'm sorry that, um, as your family, as your wife, that I hurt her, and that I dis disrespected her, and she felt disrespected, especially um, in her home. Is that good enough? Am I, am I allowed back in yet? He's like, do you want to just keep doing this, Kristen? Just doing the same stupid shit over and over in your life? Is that what you want for your life, Kristen? What the fuck, man? Are you going to change, Kristen? Are you going to really change? Deep down. <laughs> Who is coffee for, Kristen? Closers. Coffee is for closers, Kristen. She's like, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I don't do the same things over and over again. Caw -caw! How did you just fall up? Where did that coffee table come from? Sorry. I, He's like, why are you unzipping Jax's pants? Damn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just keep falling into patterns. Okay, I'm going to therapy. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I was very stressed out. I'm sure you were too. I know some of the things I said were very hurtful, and I apologize for that, and I apologize to your pussy boyfriend, Luke, as well. Thank you. And you, could, but you guys, just don't be in the middle of everything. Just, just be cool, and I think we could be, we'll be fine, okay? And then he pulls a Michelle. He's like, I mean, look. I'm an adult. I'm a father. I'm a person with a career. I'm a person with a house. <laughs> like, I'm a oh, person God. With a disgusting blazer. <laughs> I don't want this roundabout with Kristen. Can we just all move on? Yeah. So they decide to make up, kind of, but it's a very cold makeup. And Zach's like, I felt like that went good. Let's get in your car before <laughs> Michelle starts hurling racist threats at us. Hurry, run. <laughs> Oh, it feels so good to not be in a Toyota Tercel from 1996 right now. <laughs> so so uh, that's it. So Michelle and Jesse go back into the gala. Zach and Kristen get into a car and drive off into the sunset. 
And it's just another deeply entertaining episode of The Valley that concludes. That's it. That'll do it. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, always love talking to you. We will be back tomorrow with some Summer House. And if you want some Vanderpump Villa coverage, join up at our Patreon. We start that next week. And we will oh, get your tickets for uh, London, Dublin, and Birmingham, and L.A. for our May dates. Get that at watchwhatcrappens.com. And we'll talk to you all next time. Bye. Yeah.